Hello, welcome to Wellness Wednesday. I hope everyone is having a fantastic day. I am having um, a new kombucha batch brew thing that I made. Um, this one is actually Ningxia Red um, infused, um, which is really, really good, um, actually. And then I also made some that is CBD oil infused, which is also a really fun blend. So if you happen to, I'm gonna get off topic right from the beginning, right in the beginning. <laughs> but if you happen to be uh, in the Kombuka, Healing Art of Kombuka class, um, this is gonna be an added bonus when we transfer to the new system. We should be there by the end of March. So um, watch for that. And if you haven't gotten it, it's a great class and I'll let you know when it comes out. But today we are talking about hyperhidrosis. Now, a lot of people are like, what the heck is that? Like, I don't, I don't even know what hyperhidrosis is. <clears throat> and I totally, totally understand. Um, it's one of those things that unless you have it, you might not know it. But hyperhidrosis is the diagnosis or clinical term for excessive sweat. Now, again, if you don't experience it, you may not understand how severe it is. But people pour sweat as if they had run a marathon from the palm of their hand or the top of their head when they're just sitting in a cool 68 degree room, right? It's something that happens all the time. There are people who can't wear um, open-toed shoes because their feet sweat so much because of hyperhidrosis. Um, so in short, it's sweat, excessive sweat, like faucet sweating of a body part. And sometimes the sweating is confined, like I said, to a specific area. Sometimes it's an unusual body part and sometimes it's head to toe, full body sweating. Um, it shows up anytime. And um, sometimes it you know, might be like night sweats. Um, that's also considered hyperhidrosis. Um, so that can be helpful as well. So this condition is caused by a number of different things. It's generally caused by a mild nervous system dysfunction. And sometimes it's a secondary reaction or a secondary condition of an underlying chronic issue like diabetes or menopause or Parkinson's. Um, certain medications, certain cancers, or even like hyperthyroidism, lots of different things can lead to excessive sweating. Um, and I'm going to list a few more things just to really like exhaust the list, but um, a candida overgrowth, uh, obesity, pregnancy, anxiety, hypoglycemia, all things that can cause hyperhidrosis or, or excessive sweating, um, certain illegal drugs or withdrawals from drugs or alcohol, tuberculosis, um, tobacco, gout, mercury poisoning, lymphatic or endocrine infections all can cause this type of reaction in the body. So conventionally, in conventional allopathic medicine, there are remedies for this, right? Um, the remedies as much of allopathic medicine is are band-aids. So they mask the symptoms rather than treat the underlying condition. Um, to be frank, and you guys know my opinion on this, <laughs> Western medicine is really good at applying a set of chemical compounds or a medication or a treatment to a set of symptoms rather than digging deep, looking at the body as a whole, looking at a systems-based approach or a multi-systems-based approach and finding the cause at the root and fixing it. So if you haven't seen um, the word idiopathic in front of the diagnosis, and there's some jokes around that, as you can imagine, um, then if, if you've ever seen idiopathic in front of a diagnosis, that means that the physician didn't know the cause. So it translates in layman terms as unknown. So idiopathic hyperhidrosis would be excessive sweating as at an, of an unknown cause. So typical treatments that are available, heavy duty antiperspirants. <clears throat> um, and so often a heavy duty antiperspirant or heavy duty deodorant is something that you might think of, um, is full of prescription grade aluminum chloride. Um, and so they, that's a solution that you place on the hands, on the scalp, on the feet, on the underarms, around the hairline, and it works by absorbing that aluminum chloride, the active ingredient, and plugging up the sweat glands. As we know, aluminum chloride, aluminum in our deodorants, and our cookware, all of those things um, of regular strength, not of prescription strength, are linked to big problems like Alzheimer's disease, like cancer, breast cancer specifically in the axilla. Um, so you can imagine amping that up with prescription strength aluminum chloride. It doesn't fix the problem, it only masks the symptoms and often causes a whole host of problems on the other side of that. 
Um, another treatment that conventional medicine uses is iontophoresis. Um, and basically that's gentle electric shock therapy. <laughs> and so this treatment is usually given a few times a week. Um, and in some cases you can build up a tolerance and spread it out so that you're doing it one time per month. Um, this treatment doesn't work very well, but when it does, it, usually the patients will purchase a home unit um, and then continue to do the treatments at home because it can be quite expensive to do it outside of the home. Um, the third option for conventional medical treatment, and I'm giving you these options because I want you to know what's available for you, right? And we'll talk more about that in a second. But the third option is Botox injections, and holy cow, is this expensive. Um, there's not a discount just because you're not using it for facial wrinkles, okay? So um, it takes a lot, lot, lot of Botox and a frequent Botox treatment um, to act to work actively against hyperhidrosis. Botox works on wrinkles by paralyzing the muscles of the face. So in hyperhidrosis, because you're doing so much of it at once, there is a pretty significant risk of muscle weakness depending on where the trouble is. So if you have hyperhidrosis of the hands and you inject your hands, your entire hand, then likely you're gonna have some muscle weakness in that hand. Um, the fourth, third, fourth, fourth thing is oral medication. So there are some medications available. There we go, applying a you know, chemical compound to <laughs> an, a symptom. There are some um, medications that stop sweating or prevent sweating from happening. But let's think about what sweating is, okay? Sweating is really, really important for temperature regulation in the body. It's really important for detoxification. So if you take a pill to stop sweating in your entire body, then lots of problems can develop, both with temperature regulation as well as your natural detoxification pathways. The last option is, in conventional medicine, is surgery. Um, and what happens is they do surgery to sever the nerves uh, to that sweaty area. But interestingly, um, I've seen two clients that have had surgery for hyperhidrosis and it works for the area intended. So the surgery does work. However, that tricky human suit, because the underlying root cause was not addressed, the, that tricky human suit actually switches the spot and creates a new spot that sweats. For one client that came to me after hyperhidrosis surgery, she had surgery for hyperhidrosis of the feet, totally worked. Feet don't sweat, she can wear any shoe that she wants, perfect. It was a success, okay? So that surgery deemed a success. However, she sweats on her left flank. So the left side of her body just pours sweat like a faucet all the time. It, I mean, is that better than her feet? Maybe, depends on the person. However, because we didn't address the root issue, all that happened was the body figured out a new way to, to create the same problem. Now, I'm telling you about the conventional medical treatments. One, because I want you to know what options are out there. And two, because just like everything else, I'm not here to convince you to do it the natural way, the holistic way. I would love for you to do it that way, but I want you to have all the information so that you can make an informed decision for yourself because without informed consent, um, you know, it's just really... I could go off onto a, a rabbit rabbit hole on that, but uh, informed consent is really, really important. And so it's important for you not to take my word for it, not to take your word for it, or definitely take your word for it, not to take your doctor's word for it, but to run it through your own intuitive filter, figure out what's right for you, do your own due diligence and um, ascertain that for yourself based on the information that you're given. I'll also note, just to get a little woo-woo, that if you're seeing this information and you're considering one of the conventional treatments for hyperhidrosis, maybe, maybe this is a sign that you should look into some other options. Speaking of those other options, so what can we do naturally for hyperhidrosis? Lots of different things. And this is a very broad topic because, you know, I listed that whole list of causes, right? That massive list at the beginning. Well, the, the natural fixes, are about as expensive, expansive, not expensive, but expansive as that list. So let's start with the basics. One, nutrition is important. Give your body the nourishment that it needs to heal. Get rid of the processed foods, feed your body organic fruits and vegetables, meats from well-fed, well-cared for animals. Aim for about 80% plant-based. So this is the short and sweet DIY version. If you're suffering from hyperhidrosis and we were to work on treatment, we would work on the full five R's and get your body detoxed and back on track. So we would remove, replace, re-inoculate, repair, and rebalance your gut, 
And then when you apply this to your nutrition, you apply this to your gut, you experience full healing from the inside out. Second thing is acupressure. Some call this little acupressure point the adjoining valley. I always have trouble getting my hands in the frame. Have you guys ever seen Ricky Bobby where like the hand, he floats his hands up and he's like, I don't know what to do with my hands when he's on TV. Anyways, um, so this is called the adjoining valley, okay? It's the pressure point, uh, it's number four on the liver meridian. And these this can be very, very beneficial when you feel hyperhidrosis begin. So for most people, hyperhidrosis doesn't happen all the time, but you'll be in a situation and then it'll just start, okay? So you take your group, your two fingers, your, your pointer finger and your thumb, and see, I can't find the camera again, uh, and then you mash it together. So you can see when I do that, you see right here, right here, it pokes out. That's the spot you're looking for, okay? So you're gonna put your thumb on that spot and you're gonna give it a massage and lightly squeeze your thumb and index finger together on the opposite hand, um, on that little bat mound or bump that pops up in the webbing between the base of the index finger and the thumb, okay? Can y'all see that because of the little banner at the bottom? So here's what I did. I pinched my fingers together. I found that little bump poking out. And then I, that's liver meridian four. And so then I put my thumb and my first finger on it and I'm giving it a good rub, okay? So if this is tender, if this is tender, then that means that it needs work. So even if you don't have hyperhidrosis, liver four is for lots of things. I talked about it in the carpal tunnel video just a little bit ago. So try that, give it a good massage. Um, that will help stop hyperhidrosis, especially in the upper half of the body. Herbal help. Herbs can help. Herbs can help hyperhidrosis, but I want you to be wary because oftentimes herbs are not a cure. They're just a Band-Aid. So the good thing, the, the benefit of using herbs as a Band-Aid rather than pharmaceuticals is that herbs don't deplete the body in other areas. They generally don't cause side effects in other areas. They generally support your other body systems while helping with the issue. So that my two favorite herbs for hyperhidrosis are schizandra and black cohosh. Um, and I would have specific dosing recommendations on that, but it really depends on the person. So if you wanna give that a try on your own, definitely um, follow the label, the bottle, the label on the bottle, or um, let me know and I can help you with that. Uh, number four for the uh, non-conventional holistic natural treatments, support your nervous system with essential oils. One of my very favorites for nervous system support is Surrender. It's calming and balancing. It helps to calm and balance the emotions. It helps to clear the mind. It's a blend of um, lavender, Roman and German chamomile, angelica and mountain savory. And you can um, diffuse that or use it topically. Uh, crystal therapy. So I like to recommend pink crystals for hyperhidrosis. There's a pink. Um, rose quartz. It's a pretty good sized piece of rose quartz. I tried to buy a 60 pound piece of rose quartz the other day and this little gal that was selling it wanted to sell it for 50 cents a pound. I was like all day long, right? So then when I went back to get it because I was on my bike when I rode to that particular shop, when I went back to get it, she was like, oh, $3 a pound. I was like, wait a minute, did we not just save 50 cents a pound? So I had to leave her behind. Um, that was a bit steep for my taste. Um, but pink crystals are really, really good. That's good crystal therapy for hyperhidrosis. Um, and the reason why you want to go for pink, so this would work, rhodochrosite would work, any pink crystal. And I try to keep it simple because unless you have had crystal healer training, you might not know that this pink crystal is rose quartz and another pink crystal is rhodochrosite and another pink crystal is pink calcite. Um, so I just try to keep it simple, right? I want it to be something where you can go, oh, there's a pink one. I'll take that. But the um, ganglia in the nerves, in the nerves in your hands and all over your body, the nerve ganglia, historically um, are, uh, tra let me back up here. <laughs> Two things, the ganglia in your nervous system all track back to the heart, the heart chakra, which is commonly associated with pink crystals. Um, and then the um, minor chakras in the hands called the nadis, are also associated with the color pink. You know, each chakra in your body is associated with a particular color. The ones in your hands, the nadis, the minor chakras are 
generally associated with pink. So you would use this by carrying it on your person, maybe having um, jewelry. So like this is a, a necklace pendant. It's not rose quartz, but they have them in rose quartz um, or a bracelet. Normally um, I'll wear a crystal bracelet of some sort. All of those are ways to incorporate it easily and sustainably into your life. Um, you can put it in your pocket. You probably want one smaller than this, um, but you can put it in your pocket or um, meditate with it. You can put it near your nightstand. If you have a big enough piece, you can just put it in your house somewhere. Um, the last thing, the last natural thing is stress reduction. So reducing your stress levels is as important, as important to your health as your nutrition and your movement, okay? Reducing stress levels is as important to your health as nutrition and movement. Even spending just a few minutes a day dedicating your, your body dedicating your time to stress relief, and I'm talking one to five minutes in the morning, one to five minutes in the evening, can make a huge, huge difference in whatever issue that you're facing, even hyperhidrosis. So try a one minute uh, meditation to reduce your stress instantly. Um, you can go to audreychristie.com slash wellness Wednesday. Um, and that should be showing on the screen for you. I'm not sure that it is. There we go. AudreyChristie.com forward slash wellness Wednesday. And you can download a free meditation guide. It's got all these cool ways to meditate. Um, and I like to say it's the, the meditation guide for people who don't have time to meditate or don't think they can, you know, like the people that are like, I can't meditate because of insert thing. So if you ask me which one of these would be most beneficial, right? Of the six, um, a holistic recommendations I made, nutrition, acupressure, herbal help, crystal therapy, stress reduction, um, nervous system support with essential oils. I would say nutrition is probably the biggest bang for your buck. However, you will get um, your very best results by incorporating multiple facets of that holistic healing plan, right? All of the things I listed, all six are a really important part of a sound holistic plan. So to wrap this up, let's go over what you got to do on the, what you got to get on the healing path with for hyperhidrosis or excessive sweating. Number one, nutrition is key. So work to remove, replace, re-inoculate, repair, and rebalance your gut and ultimately your body. This starts with the nourishment that you provide your body every single day. Use acupressure techniques to assist the meridians in flowing energy properly. Um, herbs can help. So schizandra is most... Um, Shazandra and black cohosh most commonly can be helpful depending on the cause. Um, support the body, support the nervous system with essential oils like Surrender, which is a blend of lavender, Roman and German chamomile, angelica and mountain savory. The blend Surrender is by Young Living. I'm giving you the other ones in case you use a different brand. Incorporate crystal therapy either for yourself or with a certified crystal healer to help entrain the body's energy and balance the auric field and then reduce your stress and start in a little one minute burst if you needed. So thank you so much for joining me for this Wellness Wednesday. If you have any questions, feel free to put them below. I'm Audrey Christie, holistic wellness practitioner. Be well.